Hello, Valerie and Joe. This is Tony at the Referral Auto Group. First, I want to thank you for purchasing your 2020 Shasta Phoenix 27 RKSS from us. And we appreciate your trust in doing so remotely. So we are doing this video. We're going to do three parts. We're going to do the exterior, the interior, and then packing it up, getting it ready for travel so that you know how it works once we ship it to you up there in Oregon. So let's start with the outside. I'm going to cover a lot of the features and the functions, but I'm going to go pretty fast, but this will be at least a good informational video for you. But call us anytime or shoot us an email. So start back here and back. That is your mount for your pre-wired rear view camera. It's pre-wired for the way camera. It can be changed out to a Furion or any other brand very, very easily. It's not only a reverse camera, but anytime you run your running lights, that camera will be active. You have your ladder that goes all the way up on your fully walkable roof. This is the roof that never requires your annual coating, although you do have to watch your decor around all your intrusions or your vents. So check those yearly, but this requires no annual coating. Your bumper here has caps at the end that can be removed. Your sewer hose stores in there very, very easily. It's a great place to keep it out of your storage area and all that stinky stuff away from all of your good cargo. All your exterior lights are LED, so you should have no problems in any incandescent bulbs to replace. As we walk up here around this side, in between the axles, you have your road armor, which has serviceable wet bolts. So there's Zerk fittings to where you can grease those and they're heavy duty shackle straps. This is gonna take a lot of the blow out of the road that travel it transfers into your tow vehicle or into the unit. And make special note that they are serviceable. So you have the Zerk fittings, you can keep them greased. Right here behind your rear axle is the crank to lower down your spare tire. As we walk further forward, you have your solid steps, which we're gonna show you how to load up into the doorway once we get to that portion of the video. I have your awning out, you have your LED light strip that is switched on and off at your control panel inside the door. You can adjust the pitch for this because you, even though this is sloped, when there's a heavy rainstorm, you definitely wanna bring down one corner. All you have to do, it's very, very simple, is grab your arm on this side and pull it down and it will stay wherever you leave it. Just make sure you return it back to its full extended position when you roll that in. This is your storage door here. Just to the right of it, you have some 110 plugs, which work really, really good for any crock pot cooking or anything that you wanna do outside and you don't want all the smell inside. We have your Anderson hitch, thank you for purchasing that too, in the underbelly and ready for you to install when it gets there. We have 110 plugs, satellite and cable, jacks here because you have a, a mount here where your master bedroom TV can come off the mount in the master bedroom, mount down onto here in between your two speakers and get its power and its feed from there. You have two propane tanks, one on each side. They are seven gallon, 30 pound propane tanks. Your switch over regulator is on the other side and we'll go over that when we get there. But inside here you have a red regulator. It's a low pressure regulator which keeps pressure against this hose when you f first turn this bottle on because the function in this valve is to shut down if it senses propane running too fast this keeps back pressure against it so when you open this and the propane fills the hose all the way to the other side to your feed regulator it doesn't shut down in here if it ever happens though you can undo this you're going to hear it release some pressure it resets that valve screw it back on you're good to go two straps and these come out very very easily so we walk around to the front. Inside the front compartment is your battery. This is your inverter for your residential refrigerator. It's a 1000 watt inverter. It gets its power from this 110 plug. You're gonna have three lights on this converter, or inverter, excuse me. The green means that you're on AC power. When it's on amber, it's gonna be running off the 12 volt battery. When it's red, you have an issue. So those are the three lights that you're going to see. Other than that, it's just resettable breakers and all of your wiring. Here's your motor for your front landing gear. Outside here, we have our extension and retract of your front legs and your pre-wired solar plug. So this will plug in. It's pre-wired for the ZAMP system, but they have adapters to pretty much adapt to any uh, solar system that you want. Down here on the front legs, we have factory installed the JT Strong Arms. Once you're down in this position, just tighten up your wing nuts and you're good to go. It's gonna take a lot of that wiggling out or any need to have a tripod underneath your kingpin. When you raise and lower these, though, it's very crucial that you undo these so that they don't bind up and bend. 
You have spring-loaded pins to adjust it, the length of the adjustable leg on the front. They will automatically load themselves through. The thing you want to make sure is that this protrudes all the way through the other side. Sometimes they'll only come halfway through, and if you were to lift the, the leg or put pressure down on the leg, it could bend that pin. So just make sure you always have it protruding through the other side. You have your docking light here for any um, light that you need when you're unhooking or hooking up in the dark. Underneath your master bedroom slide, this is your bed. You do have these blue LED lights, or they're crisp white now, to keep you from running your head into the slide when you have your porch light on. Right here is an emergency crank, and the crank is in the underbelly that if these landing gear were to ever to fail, this is where you stick your crank in to manually crank your landing gear up or down so you're not stranded. Inside here is your second propane door. And this is where your regulator is to switch it over. So right now I have the lever pointed to the hose that's feeding this bottle here. And it's green, which means propane is present and there is pressure. When it's red, you're out of propane. And then you wanna flip that lever around to the hose that's coming through from the other side. Right now it's pointing to this hose, which means you're feeding off this bottle. By the way, both propane bottles are completely full. That's how they roll out of here. And you do have a complimentary battery. In this door is where you're gonna hook everything up. The puddled water here is from me testing everything, but that's why this little door is here. So you stick your water supply up through here. This is your city water connection. This is your black tank flush. You have hot and cold in your shower, which I have hanging down here. We've tested all systems for you. This is your selector switch for your water. So you just select the switches for whichever you want to do. So when you winterize this, they're both going to be up and down, switched into a position like that. When you want to fill your tank, it fills through your water connection. There's no cap on the exterior of here. So you hook your city water up and you would match the knobs to the tank fill. So this one would be straight up and down. This one would be turned. When you want to use the system, it's going to match this. And you're going to hear that water pump because I broke the pressure. Go until it shuts off because now we're in system use. So you're going to be in this position, whether you're using city water connection or your water pump. You're going to fill the tank and then winterize. This is your water heater bypass for when you do winterize, you can bypass the water heater. And then you can use this for bypassing your freshwater tank. This you can drop a hose down into a gallon of antifreeze and have it siphoned right up through here and into your plumbing. Here's all of your, your satellite connections as well as your one cable connection because cable goes in and splits. Your satellite has to be home run to each individual location. So this is where you're going to feed that here, and you do have 110 plugs in here as well. You have two of your three dump handles in here. Body waste is exactly what it is, whatever comes out of your body into the toilet. Liquid waste is going to be your bathroom. So this is going to be your shower and your bathroom sink. They are separate tanks, and they're each 45 gallons. You have a 48-gallon freshwater tank on board in here. Here is your loop if you ever want to put in a water filter. Inside the compartment right here, we have our battery disconnect switch. You'll want to use that if ever you're plugged in for extended periods of time so you don't overcharge your battery and cook it. But with it in the off position, your batteries will not charge. So you always want that turned to the on position if ever you're plugged in and you want your battery to charge up and get ready to go. So don't make that mistake thinking you're charging your battery when that's actually in the off position. So it's kind of a, a uh, judgment call. This is your water heater. It is 10 gallons of capacity. It is gas and electric, which we'll see in there. Your water heater has no anode rod. There's, that's the rod that takes all the impurities out of the water. This is a cladded tank. So you just have your Teflon plug right here. Eventually, after you drain your tank and maintenance this thing a few times, you'll probably want to put a brass plug in there, but just make sure not to crank it down too much. To the right of that, which is really cool that you have this exhaust and this exhaust on the non-enjoyment side of the trailer because you're not having any of that heat coming on the enjoyment side for fear of any kids burning themselves or you burning yourselves. You only do that once. So these two handles, these two dump handles in here will dump out of this three inch drop here. So they are split. You have one more handle for your kitchen, which is a 45 gallon tank. The problem is they could not make the fall for it to tie into this one. So they gave you a separate one near the back of the coach. You have 16 inch wheels and tires. As we come back here to the back, we're just about done with the boring stuff. Two things here is your second three inch dump. 
And there's your third pull handle, which will dump your kitchen tank. So that's only your kitchen sink. That's why there's only an inch and a half line coming into the three inch bayonet. So you can either tee these into one, or what I do is I just move it back and forth. I don't like that much sewer hose. Your rear jacks are power, and this is your control form. Extend and retract. When these come down, you're gonna notice this foot's the only one moving. But when you're on level, unlevel ground, this thing knows it. Once this touches, it'll wait for the other foot before they push equally. So now you see the other leg coming down. Once that touches, then they'll both push equally. So if you're on unlevel ground, it's not an issue, even though it's a single motor system. Go until the motor cuts out. Like that. And you're done. Retracting them is just as easy. Now it's very, very stable. 50 amp service cord, which is gonna be in under the bed when you get your trailer. It does disconnect from the side and you have 50 amp service because you do have the two air conditioners which are central and ducted. That's all I've got for the outside and I'll see you on the inside. All right, Valerie and Joe, now we're inside. This is where it gets pretty exciting. So I'm standing in your kitchen. You have your three burner cooktop and your oven. Back in the day, you had to reach in here with a lighter and light the oven. This is where they kind of stepped up to the plate. So to light your burners, we are going to select this to high. And you turn the striker and your burner will light. Plenty of pressure to run all three. Your front burner is always your high output or a high efficiency burner. That's where you're going to want to put your big pot to boil. That's getting the most BTUs. When we shut this off, we're going to take the oven one. We're going to turn it to the flame, but we still have to push in on it. So we're going to push in, and down under here, takes a minute because it's such a slow trickle of gas. There's your pilot light. Now you can let off of the button after a few seconds because it's got to heat up that thermocouple so that it'll continue feeding it. Now, you're, now your pilot light is lit. We can turn it, and your burner is lit. Pretty easy. No more sticking a lighter in there. When you turn it off, your pilot light and everything goes out, you're done. So no need to leave the pilot light running all the time. Your microwave doesn't take really any explanation. It's just like a residential microwave. It's a 30 inch microwave. So very, very large, you can fit whatever you want. All of your internal light switches usually have a, or lights have a switch here. Everything is LED as well. So very, very little consumption. This is cool because you have a hidden trash can. Coming into the kitchen, you have your thermofoil countertops and you also have a cover for your sink. This will drop down. Now you got Taco Tuesday. We can do plenty of cooking there. I'm going to set this aside. We have two well stainless steel sink. You have hot and cold, obviously, and you have your sprayer faucet. So you just hit the button to select between spray and steady. We've heated the hot water up and we've also checked underneath all sinks for leaks because that's when it's going to leak. So underneath your sink, you'll see you've got no water. We've run them all, and we've tightened up any of the plumbing. We've adjusted all your cabinet doors. In this cabinet here is where your drawers are at. So a couple drawers, you can put all of your silverware or what have you in, and they lock in when you push them. Now we come to your 14 cubic foot residential refrigerator, 14.7 cubic feet. When you open it, you're going to get your readout. So your temperature in your refrigerator and your freezer. I just turned it on, so it's still getting up to temp. But this is where you adjust it. Your instruction booklets I have put up in this cabinet. And I'll let you kind of work your way through it. If you need explanation, we can always do FaceTime. I can take you through that, but it's pretty lengthy. So all of your instruction packets are in here. You have your USB plugs here. You have GFI plugs all the way around. You have plugs everywhere, even at the table. Remember the storage in your table and your chairs. I have these here so you didn't have to watch me when we put this into travel mode on how to strap the chairs. But this is how you want the chairs when you travel. As we work our way to your entertainment center, this is where it gets pretty cool. We have remotes for everything. you got TV, fireplace, and your stereo remote. Now under warranty, when this came in during our PDI, this comes st standard with a drive stereo. Forest River went ahead and warrantied the stereo already and put the furry on a little bit of an upgrade. And the TV as well had an issue, so your TV is brand new. We've already caught those problems. We've already fixed them for you. And then your fireplace is a great heater. Now, this only runs off electricity. You have to have full hookups to use your fireplace. A couple things is you got the remote. And then you have your temperature. You got high and low. 
and that's going to control your blower. Then you have your temperature display. There you go, just kicked on. You see we're kind of warm here. Hope you're having as nice a weather as we are. So now we're blowing hot air. A cool little trick is you turn your fan on on this air conditioner, it will, fan only, will take the hot air up and through the vents and blow it through the entire trailer. This will keep you very, very warm at night. Up above it, we have our Furion stereo. This is gonna control indoor, outdoor music. It is a 12 volt appliance, so you can use this when only you have battery power or when you have 110. It'll play your DVDs, it'll play CDs, and it AM FM stereo, it's Bluetooth, and controls the speakers in the outside. Right now I've got a movie ready and waiting, so here's our remote. The When you're playing a, a movie, it will come no, through the speakers. Me. No, go! So this will go through the speakers whenever you're playing a movie. TV will not. That's not how they wire it from the factory, but... If somebody knows how to do that, they can do it for you. Now, this has the high definition antenna. I'm gonna turn this off because I'm getting a little warm. This has the high definition antenna on the roof. Right here we get about 48 channels of clear TV. So I'm gonna press the source button for the TV. And to get your antenna, you wanna to go to TV. We're in a metal building. So it's pretty impressive how clear it is, even inside a metal building. So. You want to run channel scan and follow the directions, whether you go cable or TV. If you go to cable and you hook cable into the side, you want to make sure to put this in the cable mode. And that's done through the menu and explained through the booklets or give us a call. Let's go to your control panel. Up on your control panel is where you're going to control all of your slide outs and your awning. So you're going to be able to retract your awning and extend your awning. And then each, each slide out has its own switch and it's electric. Up here we have our gas side of our water heater and our electric side. I've heated all the water on electric right now, but if you wanted gas, you can select gas as well. See if it lights. It's up to temp, so it's not gonna light. Or you can run them both for faster recovery. It is a 10 gallon water heater, it's fast recovery. You can run both of these if you have electricity present and it'll, it'll recover your hot water faster. So this is your porch lights. This turns on your speakers and the LED lights that we saw underneath your bedroom slide. These are all your entry lights. So they put some of these lights on a switch here. So right when you come in the door, you can hit those. You have your awning light, which is your rope light, the LED light strip underneath. These here are all your indicators. So battery, you can press. The battery shows full charge right now. Fresh water, we have a little bit in there so we can test all your systems and that's why we don't have a hose hooked to it. We do that so you can hear the pump cycle if there's a leak. If you hook a hose to it and there's a leak, you'll never know, it'll just leak. With this, at least we'll hear the pump cycle. This is your black water, so this is your bathroom tank for the toilet. There is no black too. So this is a standard panel that if you had a second bathroom, that's where it would be. Gray one is, I can't say for sure, but I believe it's your kitchen. Gray 2 will be your bathroom. This is a selector switch. You'll see Gray 2 and Auxiliary. If this is an Auxiliary, you'll always read empty in your Gray 2 because there is no Auxiliary tank in this. Again, it's a standard panel. So you want to make sure this is always flipped to Gray 2 and you'll get the reading out of your Gray 2. And what I do is I just watch it because sometimes they'll play tricks on us and put the bathroom on Gray 1, the kitchen on Gray 2. So as you use it, you'll know. And when you take a shower, one will fill up faster than the other. So that's that. All right, as we come up here, we have our thermostat. It is a two-zone thermostat. So zone one controls your heat only throughout the whole coach. There is no zone two for heat. So in order to do this, we hit mode, and it'll go through all the modes. Now, gas heat is what we heat on. I'm going to turn this up. It's kind of warm in here, see if we can get it to kick on. When it first kicks on, the fan cycles. When the fan cycles, it's, it's checking to make sure it has a current airflow. Let's give this a second. There we go. So now the fan is running, but we are not ex we're not getting any heat right now. It's running to make sure we have current in a correct amount of airflow. It's lifting a sail switch. Once it lifts the sail switch, it will then go ahead and light. 
When you shut this off, now I just heard the flame light. When you shut this off, it's going to shut the flame out immediately, but the fan will continue to run for about 30 seconds to cool down the combustion chamber and the whole heater itself or the furnace so that it doesn't sit there and start a fire. So when I hit mode, it's gonna cycle again. It'll say heat electric. We do not have electric heat. Now we're off. So electric heat, this trailer is ready for it. And that is when you put the heat strips in the two air conditioners, you can have electric heat through the air conditioners. You heard this just click, fan's still running. It's cooling us down and then it'll shut completely down. So every time the heater cycles, it will do that. So when the furnace brings you up to temp, it will click off, flame will go off, fan will continue to run until it reaches a, a safe temperature to completely shut itself down. Now, if we go zone one, this is the main air conditioner. This is your 15,000 BTU air conditioner in the main part of the trailer. Keep in mind that all vents are joined. They're not a complete split system, although there's two different zones. Zone one is going to be the main out here in the kitchen area, and it's a, the larger of the two air conditioners, your 15,000 BTU. So when I go system, we are going to go to cool down here, and then we're going to go mode, and we're going to allow the cool to kick on here in a second, and it's going to be this main AC. There it goes. You just heard the main AC turn on if I want to turn on both. Now keep in mind, it is pushing some air to the bedroom. You don't always need to run two, but if you do, you do need to have 50 amp service. If you only have 30 amp and you're going to take this down to a 30 amp plug, you can run one or the other, but you can't run both ACs. So if I hit zone, I'm now in zone two. We're showing as off. I'm going to go mode, cool, and I'm going to hear the one in the bedroom now turn on. Come on up and I'll show you. We just turned on up here. This here on your wall is called a thermistor. This is the sensor that talks to the thermostat and tells what temperature we are up here. Now, just like the one downstairs, this will push through the entire trailer as well, but it just brings up volume in all the vents. But if it gets too chilly up here, it will shut this AC down, which will allow just the front one to trickle through the vents and allow your temperature to pick up a little bit until your desired temperature, it's out of range and it'll kick this back on. So this is your sensor for that. All right, let's go back down. We're gonna shut down both ACs. So to turn it off, I'm just gonna hit mode until I see off. Now I have off. My zone two will turn off. Off. Now I'm gonna hit zone one and I'm gonna hit system. Off. We're completely down. This switch here is for your pre-wired Wi-Fi 4G LTE extender. It's only pre-wired. You still have to put the unit on the roof and get service for it, but they do already run the wiring for you. Your ceiling fan is controlled by a rocker switch right here. So you hit the rocker, your ceiling fan turns on, you pull the chain for whatever desired um, speed that you want. You can also reverse it. There is a little reverse switch on there. And of course you have all your lights. Label maker is gonna be your best friend. As we go into the bathroom, of course you got hot and cold water here, just like we showed you. You'll always get a little bit of air. And under here, in the sink, no leaks. We've already checked. A lot of times the fittings will be loose. If ever you get a drip, it's probably one of these hooked to the faucet. As you travel, they may loosen up. These hoses here that you see are from the Santa flush. That black tank Santa flush I showed you outside comes into here and back out. Just sitting up here is a valve called an anti-siphon valve. If ever you get a leak, sometimes those anti-siphon valves can fail. So that's what's up here probably leaking. It's sitting right up here. It, all this does is come up here and make a U-turn back to your black tank. That keeps any water or dirty water out of your black tank starting a siphon and going back into a pure water source. So that's its purpose. You have your China bathroom sink. Really cool. Okay, now we're going to go to your toilet. You're going to see the water sitting in your toilet bowl. This thing flushes with about a pint of water. You have a 45-gallon black water tank. You have the 45-gallon gray water tank for the, your sink and your shower. And you have a 45-gallon gray water tank for your kitchen. 
this water sitting here is going to keep any stinky smell coming out of your black tank. If ever this starts to not hold water, chances are you got a little toilet paper or something stuck on the bottom of that black gasket that you see. You just want to clean that off with a rubber glove, put a little bit of plumber's um, grease on there, and you'll get your seal back. This has been holding water for a couple days now, so you're good to go. And this is your China Bowl bathroom sink. Or, no, China Bowl toilet. Here's your shower doors. They're in the locked position. You always want to make sure that this is locked when you travel. You have your hot and cold water in here as well. We've checked it for all the leaks. Everything's working well. And you got plenty of pressure. I swear that's all stayed in there. Your medicine cabinet, GFI plug. If ever half the trailer goes down, always check your GFI circuit. Sometimes you may get a, a surge or a short, and you'll want to check these buttons. They will only reset if power is present. You cannot reset these if the trailer is unplugged and there's no power present to the other side of the plug. Again, we're always here for any advice. In the bedroom, you got your USBs here at the end of the dresser. You got 110 plugs here as well. You also have 110 plugs over there and on this wall. This is a true residential queen, so you can get 60 by 80 sheets. Underneath, plenty of storage. Here's your power cord. And it's a big power cord. And this is your winterization. That port that I said would siphon up antifreeze out of a bottle. This is where that screws onto, and this goes into the bottle antifreeze. And they give you a little fitting for your sewer out there, but you'll get that with a sewer hose. So all that's under your bed. You have your two wardrobes, but in the center closet, you can use this either as a wardrobe or it is prep for your washer and dryer. They give you a location to put your vent and take your vent down and out of the trailer and vent it out there. Be very careful who you have installed that because you have a lot of aluminum studs in the wall. And when they go, they get one shot at that. That's a three and a half inch hole getting punched through the side of your trailer. But they do make a ventless combination splendide washer and dryer. So that would be your best choice. So you have your hot and cold, you have your drain, and then you have your plug. If you don't choose to have those in here, then you have these hanging strips in here. The purpose of having the holes is so your clothes don't slide in transport. This door closes and pops shut. You have lights in all your closet. The light switch is here. So you have LED lights and your light switch. So there's a little LED light back here. Once you open it up, you can turn on your main light. This is that TV bracket. This will go on the back of your TV. This will pop off the wall. It's on there pretty solid when no TV is on there. But you can take it up as the arrow shows. Comes off this bracket. You walk it outside. It'll go on the bracket between the two speakers. That's what it's designed to do. The best TV that you can fit here is probably about a 24 inch because of the curvature of the ceiling. So keep that in mind. These are your you got day you have the nightshades here, and there are also the soft rise. So you can just let them go and they take themselves up. Now, let me show you your heated massaging recliners and we'll get you packed up. In your recliners, you have lights and they're timed. They will shut off after a little bit of time. You also have your heat and massage. Now, just as a fair warning, this is a common thing with all phoenixes or anything with massaging chairs is when you are watching antenna on the tv it will interfere with it so it will make that jump a little bit right now it's not but certain frequencies of channels you will get some interference on your tv that is a that is a known thing but it's uncorrectable so i just wanted to bring that up two other things all of your smoke detectors have been tested you also have your LP propane detector and carbon monoxide detector down low in the kitchen. If you ever get a beep, then that means that your batteries are falling to an unsafe level of voltage. When it goes solid, that means you have either gas or you've completely drained your batteries to a point where this is going to quit functioning because there's no internal battery. It's hardwired to your 12 volt battery. Just be careful that will go off due to hairspray or any other foreign gas, not just propane. So. Always kind of take it with a grain of salt and don't let it scare you too bad. That's what I got for the inside. Now the next segment, we're going to pack this thing up and get it ready for travel. I'll see you in a minute. All right, Valerie and Joe, let's get this thing packed up and ready to head your way. Transport guy's going to be here in the morning, so 
I want to make sure that everything is secure and ready to travel safely. So again, this is how you want these to travel. There are straps and eyelets in, in the carpet. These stack to each other and get strapped down. Your table also has a little strap on it to keep this from moving. And it's under here. Also keeps the top from lifting up for your storage. Your kitchen sink, I would always put this under your bed and that's where you're gonna find it because we are in the tail end of the trailer. One good bounce, it could hop it out, end up behind the slide and bind something up. So I'm gonna put this under your bed and that's where you're gonna find it. That's the best place for it. As far as your refrigerator, there are straps up here. You flip this up, your strap comes out of there, but when you're gonna travel, there's one on each side up here. You go ahead and lock that down, as well as each freezer drawer is going to lock in place. The sofa, there's nothing to do. This is your sleeper sofa, nothing to do. When you do get in here after it travels, just make sure this didn't come far enough forward to get bound up on this, and just make sure this didn't slide out onto the floor, because these are free-floating furniture pieces. Your TV is locked back onto the bracket. This is your strap to pull down on and get this thing to pop out and pivot if you want it to. Your stove top, I have locked down onto here. It pops with these two little rubber end retainer pieces. So that is all locked in. I will put this under the bed. As we come up here, we're gonna wanna, again, make sure that this shower door is locked into place, so it can't slam back and forth during travel. I'm gonna take the water out of the bowl of the toilet, just so it doesn't slosh while it's driving. And then this door is locked in, so it doesn't slam back and forth, also while you're driving. Again, make sure all the vents are closed. You don't wanna drive with those unless you put some toppers on it. And we'll put that down. In the bedroom, there's not much to do here. Just make sure this is locked into place. Sometimes it will, depending on the travel, this will tend to get loose. There's not much you can do about it. If it bothers you, you can put a little strap from here to there or install a strap like you have on your bathroom pocket door on this. And then you just make sure all the lights are turned off. So let's pull the slides in real quick. I leave the bedroom door open so that I can watch the bedroom slide come in. And that's the first one I'm going to do. So I want to watch that bedroom slide come in. So I'm going to... Watch it, and then I'm going to shut this door so obviously it doesn't flop around. And you're going to go till you hear a ratcheting sound. That's what it's, that's what it's there for. And you're done. So now we're closed. I'm going to walk up here and shut this door so that it doesn't flop around and travel. One other thing to note, this is totally off subject. This is where your breakers and your fuses are. So if ever you have a power failure, check in here. That's where they're located. Sorry I didn't cover that in the other video. I'm doing this off the sleeve, so this isn't really a planned video. Two more slides to come in. We have our main slide. I'm going to bring this completely in until we hear that same ratcheting sound. That one doesn't ratchet, but sometimes it will. It didn't need to because it's adjusted perfectly. So we're gonna bring in the secondary slide here in the living area. Now notice I have not put that under the bed yet, the sink cover, just because I'm gonna have this open again and we're gonna be completely cleaning it. But here comes your kitchen slide. The incredible shrinking home. And that one's all done. So now we're gonna bring your awning in. So I'm gonna hit retract on the awning. Now one thing about this awning is, if you held this down too far in the extend position, it's going to continue to roll. So if I extend it, it will actually go out all the way and continue to roll and start rolling itself back up. You don't wanna do that. Just extend it till that balance drops down. When you're bringing it back in, go ahead and just hit retract, not extend. If I did, you can see this thing's gonna keep going around and it will bring itself back in on extend. You're gonna have a white awning at that point. If you ever have a white awning on the outside, you did something wrong. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit retract. So 
when you bring it out just go until that balance drops down and let off of the button as we roll in you're going to see it start with gray and continuously get darker you always want a dark colored awning all the way in the in position if you have a white one someone hit extend and let it roll itself back up in which will also make it roll up lower And we're there. So let's go outside. Now I'm going to put the stairs in. The stairs lock in place. The biggest thing you want to make sure is when you get there and you put these stairs out, you adjust the legs so that this is sitting level over your threshold. If we're up a little bit, your door is going to bind. You want this right on the threshold, but you don't want to prying down on the threshold because you could tear the screws out of the floor. So you want it adjusted good so this door is able to close nice and smooth. When you go up in, you can leave the legs at any length that you want because there's plenty of height in the door. The other thing you could do is they make an aftermarket little mat that goes in here. So any of the debris that comes inside while you're shaking down the road, it'll land right in the high well mat and you could dump it when you get there. So we're gonna lift these up and in here. Just make sure that they don't bump and hit the sides. Should goes right in there and push until you hear it click. Now these lock behind your door jam. Then you can close your door. If your door doesn't close, then you're gonna know that these aren't all the way locked in. To bring them down, just hit this and it comes straight out of the door. We need to raise our back jacks and then you raise and lower the front, you hook up and go. That's it. Any questions, give me a call. I know this was fast. We truly appreciate your trust in your business. Let us know how we can help. Enjoy your new rig. Bye-bye.